Are you having trouble getting a knife through the wood? Do you think it's going a little bit harder than it should be? Well, we've got a few tips today that are going to help with that, but we're also going to do some experimenting. I want to try some things I haven't seen or heard of before, and when we're done, I'm going to show you something that can help you out. Let's get after it. Look at this view, huh? This, we have this here quite often. Uh, we get quite a bit of fog this time of year and the temperatures get to just right. Makes our trees nice and frosty, makes for some good pictures. Thought I would share that with you. So let's talk about what we're gonna do to, you, you clicked on the video because maybe you're having trouble cutting wood, carving wood. Maybe it seems like you're pushing a little harder than you would have to. And uh, there's some things that we're gonna do. We can have um, first of all, find some good quality carving wood. I use basswood uh, that I get from either Heineke Woods or uh, one of my favorites lately is Les Hills Sawmill. Um, you can also go more rough outs. If none of those are available to you because of where you live, ask around, see what carvers in your area are using, and, and find what, what uh, is going to give you the best outcome as far as wood goes. Now number two, you need to have a, a good carving knife. I, in a previous video, um, I talk about uh, flex cut being a really good option. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, they come sharp, and they're a good, good beginner knife. And there's other knives I talk about as well. But the point is, you need a good carving knife with a sharp edge, and you maintain that edge. You know, carve a little bit and strop a little bit. Keep that edge sharp. Okay, so you got good carving wood. You have a good quality, sharp carving knife. And now we're going to show um, something I've discovered, I've come up with, that can help it, the wood actually carve a little easier. There's uh, been some things out on the internet before that isn't bad information. It, it works. I'm going to offer another option to you. Um, and then after we go through that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some techniques that can just make it a little easier. So let's go to the carving desk and uh, check this out. Piece of one by one basswood uh, that came from Les Hills Sawmill. So I'm just going to go to the bandsaw and cut these out. Okay, back from the bandsaw. I've come up with six different things. We're gonna try here. Okay, so I've got six little pieces of one by one basswood, roughly two inches long. Okay, and they're all out of the same, well, they're not all the same piece. I, I can only get four out of one of them, but it, the other one is a was a piece that I, I received, ordered and received at the same time from the same place. So one would, it's not guaranteed, but it's safe to assume that it came out of the same piece of wood. So very similar. Uh, what we're going to do is approach this scientifically-ish. Okay, so I'm going to mark these. One is going to be our control. We're, we're going to see how that carves just as a piece of wood as I bought it. Okay, and number two, we're going to brush some oil on there. Let it soak in a little bit, see how that goes. Number three, Got a super secret ingredient. I'm going to soak this one in. We'll talk about that later. Number four, we're going to do what I've seen on other channels and across the internet. People talk about it. And that's spraying a piece of wood with some a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water. So we'll try that out. Then I want to do uh, one here where we're just going to we're just going to soak it in plain water for a while. And uh, then I want to do one where we soak it in the alcohol and water mixture. But number three, I'm not about ready to, I'm just not ready to tell you that what that one's going to be yet. you got to hang around, we'll figure that one out. We're just going to try to figure this out, and if you're having trouble cutting, you know, your hand strength isn't there, or, or, or whatever, I'll try some things to help you out. All right, let's get this started. A few of these, the ones that I'm going to be soaking which would be uh, number th three and number five and six, okay? I'm going to go put those in 
the soaking solution and we'll let them soak for a while and then we'll also before we carve we'll let them sit out for a little bit so they're not just wet and whatever that give them a chance to kind of air dry a little bit so we'll go get that started we'll be back in a little bit okay so in order to keep this as equal across the all these tests as possible um, we're going to start with the control i'm going to make the same kind of cuts on every piece as far as how easy it cuts or how hard it cuts you're just gonna have to take my word for it because i'm not sure how i can show that otherwise i'm gonna go ahead and start with number one that's our control again it's just a, a dry out of the box uh, ordered piece of basswood from les hills sawmill and then we're going to use the same knife for all of these um, this is my new uh, badger state blades knife that i'm trying out i, I just strapped it so it's sharp we'll try to figure something out here okay let's just uh check this out we'll start in the corner and there really isn't much effort needed here on this so pretty typical how i would imagine wood being carved okay now we're gonna take a a cut on a top corner here kind of going a little bit across the end grain here it should be a little bit harder and it is okay again as as expected that's our control number two what i wanted to do is this is kind of a this idea occurred to me when uh, i was oiling one of my carvings and then shortly afterwards, I uh, was just kind of looking it over. You know, you're always, when you get done, when you get finished with a carving, uh, you spend time just kind of looking it over. And, and at least my experience is I will continually find little things here and there that like, well, I'm going to change that. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to round this. I'm going to, you know, there's always something you could you take one of your carvings and, and work on it for hours and hours and hours that way. So anyway, I, I, I brushed oil like I do before I paint all my carvings these days. And I was doing some little touch-up like, well, that, that just kind of sliced right off of there. If we're going to, you know, we talk about using oil as a, a benefit for painting our carvings, meaning we're, we're going to put oil on it anyway. Let's try that as an option for seeing if we can make the wood carve a little bit easier as we go. So I'm just going to use the oil, the same oil that I put on my carvings before I paint them. It's this uh, Terra Nova Nature Oil, and we're gonna we're not going to soak it in there. We're just going to do it just like we would if we were getting ready to paint this block of wood. Again, this is block number two, and I'm just going to paint a healthy, thick coat on there, just like I do normal process before I um, before I paint. I do this to all my carvings, just soak it up. Like I said, if this if this works out, you know, it's it's a step I do anyway. What would it hurt to do it first? We're gonna find out. Are there any negatives to doing this? Does it help? Stay tuned. Keep soaking that up. It's gonna soak into the end grain a lot more, of course. We'll kind of hit that one again a little bit, as I do with when with any carving. Sometimes after I get one coat on there and I see it soaking in pretty quick, I'll go by, go around and just uh, give it another layer. As you're doing this, you can see my, my fingers are shiny and oily and it, it, it is, it's oil, right? You're going to feel that. But experience tells me after it sits there for a little bit, that, uh, that just it, it soaks in. It's I don't know if it's a combination of soaking in or uh, drying off or whatever, but after just, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, that piece of wood will be dry to the touch. Okay, so we're going to set that over here a little bit. Just that one. Put the lid back on our oil so you don't spill it. And don't forget, we got that surprise number three coming up eventually here. Number four. Number four was the one that... Uh, I wanted to do what I've seen others do. Um, I think Carver's Woodshop had a video out uh, where she explained what she does is sprays it with that alcohol and water mixture, and that works out great for her. And that's it, I've, that seems to be kind of the the generally accepted 
method for making the wood easier to carve. We're gonna grab that bottle. And this is just, uh, I got this 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And it's something that I have, I just put the spray nozzle in there. And actually, it, this is diluted. I don't remember the exact the exact dilution that I that I created, but basically, it's something I used kind of as a glass cleaner, things like that. So I ha already had this mixed up. So I don't remember the exact ratio. I don't know if it's really that important. Um, I'm just going to move this off camera here for a second and spray it, so I don't spray this alcohol stuff all over my carving area here. Okay. So you can see I just, uh, my fingers are all wet and shiny. I just sprayed a good, a healthy amount on there. I really soaked it up good. And uh, we'll just let that sit for a, a few minutes. Now this, from what I've heard and seen from other people doing that, is um, you can wait a little while, let it soak in, so you get a little more depth out of what you're doing. But then if you wait too long, it'll just dry out, right? So that's kind of a window of opportunity with that one. I just wiped my hands off on a towel. And uh, it's already, I mean, I can feel that it's damp, but it's not really transferring any noticeable moisture to my fingers. It really hasn't soaked for very long. Um, so let's go ahead and do that same test as we did on our control. We're just going to come to a corner here and we're going to take a few cuts off the corner. Yeah, and that is noticeably easier. I mean, it wasn't hard to get a sharp knife and a, a dry piece of wood. I will say that that does make it easier. Now let's do our cross the top corner with a little end grain in it, see if that's any easier. Definitely. That definitely makes a difference. So, I wasn't too surprised by this. I've never tried this before. So, that's definitely an option. A downside I can tell you from this right now is it's uh, like February 2nd today. I'm up in the upper Midwest of the United States. It's cold, it's winter. My hands, just from washing my hands all the time, and the air is dry, my hands are kind of cracked and dry. Holding this um, and spraying alcohol on it, you can... My, hand stings a little bit here and there. I mean, you know, I can tell. So, and it's just going to dry out your hands even more. So, carves pretty nice. I can see why people do that. Okay, so that's that test. Now, let's go back here to number two. That's been air drying. And like I said, you know, there's, if you rub, if you push on it, you can get a little bit of oil transferred, transferred to your fingers. So it could, you know, if, if I was doing this to carve a project, I'd probably let it so or let it dry out a little bit longer than we have. But again, this was just finishing oil or paint preparation oil put on there and then just let the air dry for a little bit. But let's go ahead and try this one. I'm gonna go strap my knife. It's it's not acting like it's dull or anything, but I want to keep it as perfect of an edge as we had for our control. So I'll be back after I strap this. Okay, I'm back from stropping that knife and just giving us a little bit more time here to dry out. And, and it has. I mean, it's if I push on it, I can see that there's a little bit of shine on my finger, but not really. I mean, it, we could let it sit a little bit longer, but let's go ahead with this test. Now, this is that nature oil just brushed on. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this is somewhere in between our control of just dry wood and the alcohol and water. Alcohol and water is winning right now. This is just brushed on oil. Okay, I'm going to do the, the test here where I go across the end grain a little bit. It is, you know, that's pretty nice. Cuts nice and smooth. And you're starting to see, I think we're getting a little bit deeper than where the oil has soaked in. That's something that will um, happen with, with the alcohol and water, too, is it's not going to penetrate through to the core just by spraying it. However, it's something that, that uh, you know, you saw that was just a, we sprayed it on there, and uh, just a couple minutes later we were carving on it. So it's something you could, you know, if you take a break to strop your knife, maybe soak your block of wood down with that, and uh, come back from stropping your knife and do some more carving. That is a good option. So, but I would say this is a close second. 
and the, this isn't going to make your hands sting and dry them out more. And it's also uh, when you get down, and you can do the same thing here too. You could, if you're getting down there and you're noticing that you're down through where the oil has soaked in, take a break, strop your knife, and apply another thin layer. Okay, another, uh, I guess a downside. I won't, I won't call it a downside. I'll say it's something to consider. You know, you have the cost of the wood and no matter what you do, which isn't that much, but it, it, it there is a cost there. Alcohol and water, easily available, cheap, that worked. This oil, um, I found a pretty decent source for it where it was reasonably priced, and I, I bought three... Uh, two bottles of it. First one I bought off of uh, the Jungle website, Amazon, and I won't do that again because it's it was way expensive on there. Um, but I I found it on Jamestown Distributors, uh, and it was less than half, quite a bit less than half the price of what it was on Amazon. We've done our control. We've done brushed nature oil, and we've done a sprayed alcohol and water. Okay, I've got three other test pieces that are soaking right. I'm going to go take those other ones out of their soaking containers, and we will let them dry dry to the point where it's carvable without getting water and whatever on my fingers. Okay, moving on in our testing here, we have three test pieces left. Number three, number five, and number six. Remember, number three is the mystery solution. Um, so let's talk about the other two. Number five, I just soaked that in some plain water. It, it soaked for 25 minutes, and it's been out now for 10 minutes or 15 or whatever. It's basically dry to the touch. I mean, I can tell that it's damp, but it's not leaving water in my hands, which is the same same stage we were at with the uh, alcohol and water test. Okay, number five. It was just soaked in water for 25 minutes and dried out a little bit. Let's do the same same testing. And that's, that slices off of there really nice. Really nice. Okay, that's just water. We'll do the cross grain, end grain slice here. And that cuts really nice. I would say it's very much like the alcohol and water spray. And this one was soaked in water. We're going to have to come back to this later because my concern is we don't have a lot of detail or anything carved in this piece here. So I don't we'll have to see what what time shows us but the concern with doing this is you know you're soaking up all those wood fibers and that the expansion and then contraction when it dries out will stress everything and you could get cracking little hairline cracks throughout your carving we'll we'll uh, follow up on that later we'll just set that one aside for now okay now number six number six is one we soaked in the alcohol and water mixture. It's the same mixture that I used on number four, which was sprayed on. This one was soaked for 25 minutes. It should have penetrated into the wood a lot more. Again, it's dry to the touch, feels, I mean, it feels damp, but it doesn't transfer. So let's go ahead and make the same, same cuts there. Cuts pretty easy. It, it definitely cuts easier than the dry piece of wood. I kind of miss the sound. You guys notice that? I don't know if you ever notice that in my carving videos, but as I'm carving, you get that knife through the wood sound, and I kind of like that sound. But if if you're you know if you're looking to make this easier, especially in the beginning, if you're just building up your carving muscles, but so yeah, this was alcohol and water soaked for 25 minutes. We'll do this test here. And it just slices it right off. It carves really nice. It definitely makes it easier. Now, again, my concern with this one would be similar to what we just talked about with the water, soaking it for that long and, and getting it deep into the wood, is that as that totally dries out, is that going to crack? All right, you guys have been putting up with all this testing and stuff here, me talking and teasing you with this surprise. So... Are you ready? Should we reveal what we put, what we soaked number three in? Again, this soaked for the same amount of time, 23 minutes, or 25 minutes. So 25 minutes. It's got a smell. It's a smell that I haven't smelled quite a few years. Hmm. Smells like, 
when there's a baby in the house. That's right, baby oil. This It's inexpensive, has a pleasant smell. I mean, that is if you like the smell of babies. And it. Uh, my thought on this was similar to how I came up with brushing it with that oil before you carve is if you treat your oil, your carvings with oil, it seems like they paint nicer. Uh, I've heard people, this is essentially a, a version of mineral oil, right? Um, ingredients, mineral oil and fragrance. That's what baby oil is. So I've heard of people using mineral oil to, to prepare their paintings or their carvings for painting and also just kind of preserving the wood. So my thought process here is if, we're, if we want to do that anyway, if we want to soak it up with oil, preserve it, and make it even to paint, why not try that ahead of time and see if that helps out with making it easy to carve. So let's try it out. Now this is, again, soaked for 25 minutes. Mm. I can tell you this. It definitely carves easier than a dry piece of wood, but I don't think it carves as easy and smooth as the water and alcohol or the soaked in water or soaked in water and alcohol. But it does carve easier than, you can hear, see, you can hear that. It, it's, uh, I would say, I'm kind of surprised by this. I really thought this was going to be winner, winner, chicken dinner. But it, it's definitely easier than dry. But it, it does make a nice cut, though. A really nice, smooth cut across that end grain. Um, so that's something to consider, too. It, it probably would be really nice for holding detail and things like that. I'm going to say that's... Here's one is our control. If I was ranking these right now, if, I, if we just called it right here, I would say the next is soaked in baby oil, mineral oil that smells like babies. And now this is from hardest to carve to easiest is what I'm getting at here. And right after that, I would say is where we just brushed on our, our finishing oil. And uh, that carved... I think easier than when it soaked in mineral oil for 25 minutes. So just brushing it on with this, I don't know if this says what's in it. It just send it, says it's a blend of pure oils that doesn't contain, contain any dyes, perfumes, or additives, prevents cracking. So, you know, that's a plus when you're talking about preserving your carvings versus soaking them in water that's probably going to cause it to crack. So anyway, that um, soaking it in mineral oil... Number two, and then I would say br just brushing on a layer of that oil there was easier than that. And it give, it's a nice smooth cut on there too, okay? And then moving down the line, easier to carve, I would have to give that to spraying it with alcohol and water. Shouldn't be too surprising because, you know, a little research on, on the internet, it'll you'll find that that's kind of a common practice. If, if you're having trouble carving, you can... Mix up some isopropyl alcohol and some water and spray it on there just a couple minutes before you start carving. Reapply as you cut down through it and, and get past what's what's soaked up. So that that uh, was easier to cut than these with oil on them. And then I would say these two, I I don't notice any difference really between the two. One was soaked in just water. One was soaked in alcohol and water, but they both, they just carve like butter. They just carve really super easy. So that, that's how I would rank them in, in ease of carving. Okay, now that we know that, let's, let's talk about, again, just kind of recap. At this point, what some of my concerns are or hopes for these different methods. With our control, our dry wood, and it, it really, it doesn't carve difficult for me anyway. Like I said, I've been carving a long time. I got pretty good carving strength built up. Basics on any of these. Good wood, the sharpest knife you can possibly get your hands on, and then keep it sharp. Maintain that sharpness. And then if, if you don't want to get involved with adding, coating, soaking, spraying, all of that stuff, you're just going with the dry wood. If you are having trouble. Um, one thing 
I I see comments in wood carving forums and and on YouTube videos and things where I just can't cut like those guys that make those videos do. And a lot of that I think might be learning knife control and learning how important I've mentioned this in a, another video just learn how important it is to control ever so slightly the angle of your blade as you're going into the wood if if you you know if you lay that knife flat it's not going to cut if you just tip it a little bit and very you know learn that feather control you can get to where get closer here and see that just shave the tiniest super paper thin paper thin layer of wood off of there see that just barely catches it and you can just roll that right up and it really takes minimal effort i mean it's really not bad to carve don't be in a hurry don't push in try to make those super deep v cuts and things like that just take your time lay that knife down and shave it you know it'll take you longer but i can tell you what else it'll do for you other than making it easier to carve is you'll make fewer mistakes you'll when you're starting especially you don't if you don't know exactly what cuts to make and where you're going to end up take little shaving cuts and small cuts controlled that wood's going to come off of there if i do this 20 times it's easy and i can control what's happening i can see what's happening the cuts are nice and smooth and it's just a way to go i think especially when you get close to the end of a carving but if you're struggling with with uh you know you clicked on this because you want to learn how to carve wood easier material wise good wood tool wise super sharp knife method wise thin shaving cut and when you're doing if you want to do details don't try to push your knife in there so deep and get it all at once it's true if you can get your knife in there deep enough and make one cut versus three you might have a little cleaner edge but it's going to be a lot harder to do and there's also a chance for breaking the tip of your knife off that's something that you have to balance out and learn with experience over time but if you uh you know if you want to just do it in different layers you know different cuts and then come in here and take a thin cut away from that and do that in several layers it is true that you might end up with a few cut lines right here however if you know that if that's your strategy say i wanted to carve i want to whatever this element is if it's an eye if it's part of a shirt part whatever it is if that's what i'm going for start just a little ways away from that line and do your thin your your shallow cut in your shallow v cut or whatever back to it that was super easy to do i didn't have to strain at all and you just repeat that process don't go very deep just do another thin layer it's practice it's practicing control it's it's all good stuff and if you're worried that by doing that you're going to have the the vertical part of that cut is going to have some extra lines in it so what that's why we started away from here a little bit now after that's down in there take your knife and clean up that edge just come around like this and you'll get back to where you want to be with a nice smooth edge and you didn't have to do it all in one big deep cut just some little things like that to help you if you're starting out starting out and or struggling getting the knife through the wood now if you do choose you know still maybe your knife that you have isn't the sharpest or the wood isn't the the smoothest and you want to ease it up a little bit here's some other things you can try uh, the oil methods you're going to oil anyway when you're done um, you can soak it in oil will make it easier and certainly you know it's not it, it's not going to dry out as fast and it, if you let it soak it's going to be deeper in the wood this actually feels a little bit heavier it's got oil soaked into it and it still carves really nice you know even on on here you combination of these solutions take that soak it in oil that smells like babies let it dry out a while and start carving and combine that with using the real shallow flat knife controlled slicing and that is just a nice super smooth cut on that surface that i take your time and over time you're going to build up muscles you're going to get uh 
familiar with your knife. You're going to have better knife control. It's just going to it's going to evolve into uh, having really great projects when you're done. Nice and clean. I originally was talking, I think this is getting easier to carve now that it's been out a little longer. I'm still kind of thinking that might not be a bad way to go. We'll cut across this end grain again once here. It's still making that carving wood noise, which I like. But boy, that just slides right through there. You know, maybe part of it might be a little bit softening the wood, but let's consider that what we're doing is pushing a piece of metal through a piece of wood. That's a mechanical process uh, causing friction covered in oil. Maybe we're reducing that friction. I mean, that's I am thinking this is carving nicer and nicer the longer it sits here. Maybe I didn't let it uh, soak in enough. That's nice. Uh, I might I might move this up a bump here in our line. Um, well, let's go back to this one. This is one we just brushed the oil on. We'll do another little check here. Yeah, see that one? Now I'm getting down below where that oil was soaked in, I think. Okay, you can tell the color. The color is slightly different now, too. We'll do this little test up here. It's cutting pretty nice, too. But again, that, that oil is a little more expensive. I'm kind of thinking, here's something else to consider. If you're trying to, and you can experiment, try different things, you know, it's it's learn as you go around here. Nobody's telling you this is how you got to do it. But um, something else to consider. Taking care of your carving tools. My shop is pretty much climate controlled year round. I don't let it get too hot and humid in here in the summer, and I don't let it get too cold in the winter. My carving tools, I don't have any problems with rust or anything like that. Now, that being said, if I were to start soaking all of my projects in, in water or alcohol in water and you're running your knife through that all the time, putting that, that water onto your knife blade, you're going to have to be uh, mindful of that. And maybe when you're done carving, take a little, some kind of oil, mineral oil, your finishing oil, whatever, and just take a rag and just wipe off your tools. Make sure you don't leave any of that water on there. Maybe just a nice thin film of that oil. Keep your tools from rusting. Now, if you go with soaking it in oil, you don't have to worry about that. Like I, here, I can see that's actually covered. It's got oil on there, which is fine. It won't hurt a thing. It helps, you know, it won't, it won't damage your knife. Let's go back to this guy. Number five was the one that was soaked in just water put my carving glove on and I want to try over here on on uh, this corner somewhere right here I'm just gonna make a nose I want to make some kind of detail here that we can assess after it dries out I want two things with this little test I want to see how if it was gonna be too soft to actually carve detail in it which I don't think it is it is different it's it's kind of a different feel I just want I want to see if I could get some of that finer detail in there. I just wanted to have something on there that as this dries out, I want to see what happens to that. Again, that was soaking it in water. Now, something else to consider. So many variables in, in all that we do, right? So these are one by one pieces. The ones that have been soaking for 25 minutes, they're going to be soaked pretty much all the way through. Now, if you're working with a two by two or a three by three or a bigger piece of wood, you might have to soak it longer. Interesting. It's an interesting topic. It's one I've never really messed around with before. I've never had much of a struggle getting a knife through the wood, and it's gotten easier over the years. The more the more you do, the, the more conditioned you are to it, the more you learn the techniques, and probably let this sit overnight, uh, let some of this dry out. This is the one that was soaked. I'm not too worried about the one we just sprayed with water. Based on information I've seen and read in other videos, um, this is a pretty safe method to spray in the the alcohol and water on there. It's not going to change the fibers of the wood enough to cause major cracking or anything. But those are nice smooth cuts. You can kind of see already. Like here's the one that was just sprayed with alcohol. It's kind of a rough edge here anyway. Like this edge and this edge would be the same. And on this one that's been soaking, it, these outside little fibers are all curling up kind of coming apart. So we're going to keep an eye on that, see what happens when it dries. Okay, now that we've had a chance for the ones that were soaking in water and water and alcohol to dry, um, I don't know if they've, if they're 100% dried clear through, 
But uh, as I mentioned, I wanted to check back, follow up on this. Here's why. Um, this is the one, this is number five. And five is the one that we soaked in water for 25 minutes. And then we let it set out a while. See right here, hoping this is showing up decent. We carved this nose and it, look, there's a crack that is formed from the top of the bridge or by the bridge of the nose down over here. There's a, a small crack here that's coming down. And there's a little crack over here too. Now, these aren't knife marks. I didn't cut in like that. That's a crack. That That's what happens when, when you soak it in water, soak it in alcohol and water. It cuts super, super nice. But you're going to have that happen. Now, one way to... I mean, if that's how you choose to do it, that's fine. Maybe it's part of the look you're going for. Something to consider, though. And there's ways to fix that, too. You could probably... Uh, get some thin super glue or something and put in there and make sure it doesn't crack anymore and then kind of carve and shape. It, it it all depends. I just wanted to make you aware that soaking them. Now this one, this is only soaked in water and alcohol, but we didn't really carve any features in here and I don't really see any evidence cracking or checking or anything. But like I said, we didn't really, we just did our test cuts on there. So to summarize, most important thing, find the best quality wood you can find. Get a good knife, and I would recommend flex cut as a starting knife, and then move into some of these nicer ones. Or you can you can start with these. I'm just saying that flex cut for if you're unsure about carving would be a little less expensive. But these are great knives too. But keep it. Make sure it's a sharp knife, suited, you know, a good shape for carving, and maintain it properly. Keep it sharp. A good wood sharp knife by far is the best thing you can do for making the knife go through the wood. Beyond that. The kind of the repeated option you see on the internet is uh, spraying it down with alcohol and water and letting it sit a couple minutes and then carving. And you have that's a it's not soaking it up enough to cause checking, cracking, but it does make it carve a lot easier. You have that you have to repeat that process as you go because it it doesn't soak in deep enough. You'll you'll carve that softened layer off. So that's a that's an option that's proven. People have done that. I am kind of partial to these other two options. Number two is where we just brushed on the oil, our finishing oil, and it soaked in a little bit. And what I'm finding out, this might be the secret right here, guys. Do the oil, but then let it sit. Let it sit overnight, then come back and try to carve it. That just carves so nice. I mean, it really does. This is the one we just brushed the oil on, and I think the longer it has been sitting, the better it carves. Now, this is the one, number three. Remember our secret, super secret deal is we soaked this one. I soaked this one in baby oil, which is, again, just scented mineral oil um, for 25 minutes, so it's soaked in really good. It's still... Also, it seems like the ones that have oil on it, after they have been sitting for a while, I would put them right up there with the alcohol and water, spraying it on and repeatedly and cutting as you go. I think uh, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it, okay? I'm going to throw it out there. That's my recommendation right there. One of those two. If you have a preferred finishing oil, you want to brush it on before you start carving. You know, and if you get in there too deep, you might have to brush on a little bit more. Just let it sit for two, three hours overnight, whatever, come back and that that carves smooth. And like I said, I think, you know, as much as anything, it might be that it's a lubrication in the, in the wood. It, it helps with that mechanical pushing the knife through the wood. And there's two extra benefits to doing that. Your knife will get a little oil on it. If you can see that, um, there, there's little beads of oil on that knife blade. That's not a bad thing. That's, if anything, it's going to keep it from rusting, right? Mineral oil, baby oil, that's all cheap, available stuff. I, I bought that bottle at a Walmart. And you see that I cut through there, it actually was squeezing the oil out. But it's not mushy. It's not, uh, you know, it's still, you know, it's just going to allow you to carve a wee bit easier. Making those tight curves like that. Look at that, the knife doesn't isn't chattering. You can just scoop that right around. Tell you what I'm going to do. This is my recommendation. Soak it in oil. You know, figure out how long 
works for you and figure out how long you want to have it sit afterwards, leaving it sit overnight. I think it's only, it, it isn't going to, isn't going to hurt. And, uh, and then when you're ready to paint, there you have it. My, uh, scientifically ish study on how to make wood carve easier. You learn something new every day, don't you? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing. Let me know if you try this and it and, and if it works, doesn't work. If you run into issues with it, I'd really like to hear your feedback. And uh, and and if it's not working for people and uh, you hear all about it, I'll, I'll make another video and we'll try something else. But there you go, guys. Thanks again.